I can prove to you without a doubt that the Trinity is a pagan Catholic idol. And the Catholics, they worship the Trinity, and it is an idol to them. And not to mention, they actually make Trinity statues, too. I'm going to prove that to you in this video. But first, what does the Catholic Catechism say about the Trinity? So, uh, the Catholic Church Catechism, I have a PDF copy here. In number 249, it says, From the beginning, the revealed truth of the Holy Trinity has been at the very root of the church, Church's living faith, principally by means of baptism, you know, perverting the baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. They're perverting that. Uh, it finds its expression in the rule of bapt baptismal faith formulated in the preaching, catechist, and prayer of the church. Uh, such formulations are already found in the apostolic writings, such as the situation uh, taken up in the Eucharistic litur liturgy. I call it liturgy, as I like calling it. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with you all. So they're quoting what Paul wrote. Which again doesn't doesn't prove the Trinity because the word Trinity is not even in the Bible, and um, getting ahead of myself. But so they quote that verse, and that, that's a verse that it's kind of because that's the same verse a lot of Trinitarians will run to as well, where it talks about you know the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the grace of Jesus, or the grace of God, or sorry, the, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost. A lot of Trinitarians will quote that verse too. Funny how they're using the same talking points as the Catholic Church. But uh, if you jump down to verse, or number, not verse, number 251, it says, in order to, this is proof that the Trinity is a, a man-made doctrine, in order to articulate the doctrine, or the dogma of the Trinity, the church had to develop her own terminology with the help of certain notions of philosophical origin, substance, person, hypostasis, relation, and so on. In doing this, she did not submit the faith to human wisdom, but gave a new, unprecedented meaning to these terms. Uh, from which then on would be used to magnify the ineffable mystery infinitely beyond all that we can humanly understand. Then, of course, number, uh, number 252, the church uses the term substance, rendered also at times in, by essence or nature, to des designate the, the divine being in its unity. The term person or hypostasis to designate the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the real distinction among them, now, here's what they twist that. They say, we use the word person to talk about the distinction with the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Well, there is distinction in the Godhead. Obviously, there is distinction. Here's some proof on that. Uh, Matthew chapter 3. Here's a, here's a best verse that... Because people say, oh, you're, people have accused me of being oneness and modalist. I'm not, a, I'm not a modalist or a oneness heretic. And here's some good verses uh, that prove oneness to be false in modalism and when i say oneness i mean oneness in the sense of there's like no separation because obviously i am oneness in the sense of god is only one being i i do believe that but i'm not oneness in the sense of there is no separation in the godhead here's a verse that proves that matthew chapter 3 verse 16 to 17 and jesus when he was baptized went straightway out of the water and lo the heavens were opened unto him and he saw the spirit of god descending like a dove and lighting upon him and lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So we do see separation there. The, the Son is on earth. The uh, Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, is descending down. And the Father is in heaven, praising the Son. So there is distinction there. But where does the Bible say that God is three persons? Or Trinity. Where is the word Trinity at? Let me just tell you this. Uh, search up the word Trinity. It's hard to hold the phone while doing this. Look at that. Trinity. Focus. Zero verses found. The word Trinity is not a word found in the Bible. So why is that we believe in the doctrine of the Trinity? Uh, where is that in the Bible? And again, the, the Catholic Church Catechism openly says they have to articulate their own uh, terminology, the substance, person, everything like that. But check this out. Go on Google and just search up uh, Catholic Trinity statues. Or my hand's kind of shaky. And you will see the Catholic Church actually makes statues of the trinity check this out statues of the trinity just google catholic trinity statues you go down start my hand shaking do apologize for that like these trinity statues hmm. what does the bible say let me show you this acts 17 29 i do apologize again i do apologize for my hand shaking acts chapter 17 i mean i gotta try to get one of those uh handles on, the, on your phone acts chapter 17 Verse 29. For as much as the, for, for as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. Uh, what are you doing making statues of the Godhead? 
Of course, this is not the Godhead, it's just their pagan idol, but they think this is the Godhead. Uh, what are you doing making statues of the Godhead? You know, stone statues? Um, what does the Bible say? Uh, we ought not to think the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone. Huh. Kind of weird that you you violate plain scripture. Of course, Catholic Church, the Catholic Church is constantly contradicting the scriptures because divine tradition overthrows the scriptures with Roman Catholicism. So I just wanted to show that to you guys. Uh, the Catholic Church is a pagan cult that has borrowed pagan or Greco-Roman uh, pagan religion and just re repackaged it repackaged it as a supposed Christian denomination. It is not. Uh, here's a verse, a good verse proving that Jesus Christ and the Father, I mean there's so many verses I can go to to prove that Jesus and the Father are the same being, but the best verse I can go to, uh, where is it, it was in John chapter 14 verse, I think it's 7 to 9, Jesus says, if you had known me, you should have known my Father also, and henceforth, you, and sorry, and from henceforth you known him and have seen him. And Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Like what Jesus says in verse number nine. Jesus saith unto him, Have I have I been so long time with you, and that yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? You've seen Jesus Christ, you've seen the Father, that's simple. And there's so many verses I can go to. I mean, let me show you another verse. Just so you know, because they'll say that, oh, you know, uh, where is it? It was, uh, it was, I think it was uh, John chapter, where was it? I had I had my notes somewhere, but I just forgot where I put my notes. I think it was John chapter 15, here it is. John 15, 23. He that hateth me, hateth my Father also. Oh no, I'm sorry Jesus Christ, that's not true because you see you're two separate, you and the Father are two separate persons. Uh, no, you hate Jesus Christ, you hate the Father also. That's simple. They're not just these, these um, two separate persons. No, they're, they're the same being. It's that simple. John chapter 13, verse 20. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receive, sorry, verily, verily, I say unto you, hard to read while holding the phone, he that receiveth whomever, or sorry, he that receiveth whomsoever send receiveth me. He that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. Again, sorry, there's thunder outside, there's a thunderstorm out. You receive Jesus Christ, you receive the Father. Of course, another verse that ties into this. Matthew chapter 10, verse 40. He that receiveth me, or sorry, he that receiveth you receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. Again, they are the same being. You receive Jesus Christ, you receive the Father. You've seen him, you've seen the Father. You, you've hated him, you hated the Father. One last verse to kind of tie into this. I know I said only one verse, but there's just so many verses I can go to. Uh, this will be the last verse I'll run to. Matthew chapter, or sorry, John chapter 12, verses 44. Here's a good one. John chapter 12, verse 44. Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. Look at verse 45. And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. So wait a second, you believe in Jesus Christ, you're not believing on him, you're believing on the one that sent him, and you've seen him, you've seen the one that sent him? I mean, it can't be any more clear than that. They are the same being. They're not two separate persons, but also they're not just one being that just shapeshifts like the modalists claim, okay? Modalism and Trinitarian, Trinitarianism are both wrong. Neither one of them is correct. The biblical Godhead consists of body, soul, and spirit. Jesus Christ is the body, the Father is the soul, the Holy Ghost is the spirit. That's simple. So don't be deceived by this pagan Trinitarian Catholic just Catholic nonsense. It is satanic and it is pagan and it is it stems from Roman Catholicism. The Catholic Church borrowed it from Greco pagan or Greco Roman pagan religion. I mean just come come be more clear than that. You've seen him, you've seen the Father. I mean, all those verses prove that. They are one being. So don't be deceived by this Catholic pagan Trinitarian um Satanism. That's what it is, it's Satanism and idolatry too. Don't be deceived. God bless you. Goodbye. Thank you.